Hi, today I want to continue the series about the NRF 51822 from Nordic Semiconductor and the Bluetooth service. And today I using the SI7021, a relative humidity and temperature sensor from Silicon Labs. And it have a two wire interface or also called I squared C bus. And we also talking about how to use the I squared C or to wire interface with the Nordic chip and the Nordic driver for this interface. So first let's have a look into the data sheet for this SI7021 from Silicon Labs, the humidity and temperature sensor with the I square C bus. It have a great precision, 3% by humidity and only 0.4 degrees Celsius at temperature readings. But it can only operate at minus 40 up to 125 degrees. So it's only for ambient temperature measurement purposes. So let's have a look at the interface. We have the humidity sensor and the temperature sensor, an analog to digital converter, the control logic, and the I square C interface with the data and the clock line. So here's our operation voltage. We can use it from 1.9 up to 3.6 volts. So it's fit into our 3.3 voltage of our NRF51822 device. And the current consumption at standby is only 620 nano ampere and we have a peak about maximum of four milliamperes and if we don't use the heater and i don't use it so we don't have to worry about the 100 milliamperes and here we have a wiring example we have to pull up our clock and data line with some resistors. Typical, we use 10K, but we can also use 1K up to 10K. And here we have our positive voltage and the ground signal. And for programming, we use this measurement commands and the I square C registers. This one in the hold master mode for humidity readings and this one for temperature readings and all other registers I don't use today. So let's have a look into the wiring. I use a module for the SI7021. It have also voltage regulator and pull up resistors, but we can have a look at the, and this later. So I connect VCC to VCC with our Bluetooth chip and the ground also get connected and I connect the data line to GPIO pin 4 and the clock line to GPIO pin 3 and as mentioned if it's not on your module you can have also some pull up resistors 1k up to 10k and you have to pull up the data line and also the clock line and for debugging purposes you can also have a UART to USB converter to connect to your PC and you have to connect the ground to have all, all the same ground potential on your system and you have to connect the transmit line to the receive line and the receive line to the transmit line so it gets crossed into your UART adapter and not in this picture you also have to connect your programming device. I use the ST-Link version 2 and also the 3.3 volt from this and and also I connect the command data IO and also the clock line. Now let's do a quick source code review. We have our main routine and in this main routine we start up our logging and put out some logging information. We configure our two wire interface or I square C bus, initialize our timer, initialize our Bluetooth low energy stack, our peer manager, our gap parameters. We initialized our own Bluetooth service, initialize the advertising cap parameters and the connection parameters. And then we start the advertising and enter the main loop for just power management or entering the sleep mode. So start with the two wire interface. We set up our 
GPIO pins and our two wire interface clock frequency. And I use the low priority because all other priority disturb the Bluetooth service stack. So this is very important. Don't use any, any other priority than low. And then we enable the two wire interface. So let's go back. We initialize our timer, just a small timer for reading out our measurements. We just create the timer with the small timer ID. Then let's have a look at the Bluetooth stack. It's just a normal routine to initialize the Bluetooth stack with your own with your own handler routines and Bluetooth events and sys events. So on this Bluetooth event dispatcher, we call our own Bluetooth event dispatcher for our measurements. So let's go back to the main routine. The peer manager is just as normal and the gap parameter is just normal. And then we can have a look at the services. Any So there we initialize our own Bluetooth service and we can have a look in this init routine. Now I put out some characteristics, uh, communication characteristics, so we can write some data from our client to our Bluetooth peripheral. And for the measurement, we use another characteristics to put out the values to our client. So now let's go back and also we set a write handler so we can have a look at this write handler. We have a notification enabled event and in this we start a timer for the measurements and we also have an interval change event so we can change the timer duration and if the timer is running we have to stop the timer, change the timer ticks and then start it again. And also we have an event for notification disabled or the same if the whole Bluetooth communication is ended. So let's have a look at our own routines, the header files. I set a 128-bit random UUID so we can use a Linux tool UUID generator or we can have a web-based UUID generator. And I randomly set our service and communication and value characteristics ID. Here we have a definition of our events. And in this structure, we have all the handles for our characteristics and the event handling and the raw humidity data, the raw temperature data and a flag if, it's, if our notification is running and also the interval. And after we look into our init routine, we can have a look into the characteristics. This is uh, write characteristic so we have a write enabled and the other characteristics are our notification so we have only read and notify enabled and above we have our event dispatcher we have a connection event disconnection event and write event and the whole logic goes into this write event now let's assume our notification is running and we're running into the timeout handler the only thing we do is to send out our uh, command on our two wire interface at the right address of our sensor and we set the reading of our humidity and wait for the call of the two wire interface handler. And that's the routine above our two wire interface handler. And if we receive an event and it's a transfer event, we send out the read command about the two wire interface and read the right register to a variable. And if we are finished with this reading, we send out the temperature reading and wait again for the transmission calling event. And then we send out again. Now we send out the read command for the temperature register and then we read the temperature. And after we read the humidity and the temperature, we put out some logging information. And we have also some event handling if there's a error on our two wire interface. And after all this reading, we also update our sensor data via Bluetooth in this routine. And we call our sensor update Bluetooth command and 
just as in our last example, we put the humidity and the temperature data in some buffer. And we send out the buffer via Bluetooth. First, we set the variable into our gets, and then we put the gets stack out via Bluetooth. So the only thing we have to mention is um, how to connect our GPIO pins to everything. We have our SDK configuration with Bluetooth advertising enabled. Then, then we also have two wire interface enabled and I use the instance zero. So we have to enable instance zero and instance one is not enabled. And I also enabled UART for the debugging. And in the custom board header file, we set our clock and data pin for two wire interface and I use this Arduino based definition. And we can also have a look into the make file. It's just normal Bluetooth stack make file. So I define our chip. It's an NRF51822 and I define that I use our custom board header file. I use the S130 soft device and here I define all the objects for our code. So let's do clean and also we build all and now we can flash all our code with the soft device with this command flash s130 to our chip and after we change some code we only have to do a flash with our new firmware and don't have to flash the whole soft device again so let's have a look at some debugging information i use putty with the uart converter on tty usb 0 so let's have a look and put it to foreground and I do just a reset. So no flashing. I just reset our chip for debugging purposes. So we can have a look at the debug information. And now I open my NAF Connect application on my mobile device and start scanning and do a connection. Now I write um, maybe 500 milliseconds interval to our device. So I send an interval change and then I start the notification. And now just change the interval maybe to 1000 milliseconds. So we can see the difference. And now I send 1000 milliseconds and now the interval is just a little bit slower. And now change again, maybe to 2000 milliseconds. And now we just update every two seconds. Or we can change it maybe another time to 5000. And now we only have an update rate every five seconds. So that's just for energy saving purposes maybe. And now just for fun, I just changed back to 200 milliseconds, so it's very fast updating. So that's a little bit nicer. So let's do some temperature changing. I do some, I have a breath on the temperature and humidity sensor, so the humidity have to rise up, as you see. And it's just nearby my computer, so it's very hot outside the fan. Now let's have a look at the bench and our breadboard setup. Here we have a breakout board for our NIF51822 and the SI7021, the humidity and temperature sensor. And I have also some other more breakout boards just in case something is wrong. And I also have a heart rate sensor and a accelerometer for the future. So I can show more examples with Bluetooth. And I have also a flash chip. So just to store some data into the flash. And I have also a CMOS 10 bit counter just for the future. And also I have a cheap humidity sensor to compare with our very precision sensor. So let's open up our mobile app, the NIF Connect from Nordic Semiconductor. And just do a scanning. Here's our Bluetooth device and our 128-bit service. So let's 
connect and first we set up our new interval. I start with 500 milliseconds. So now, okay, <laughs> I have pressed again. So here's our data reading. Now let's change it maybe to uh, go to 1000 milliseconds or one second centered. And now we see the update is slower. So change again, we have set to 16 bit. Now 5000 milliseconds, so the update rate is very slow every five seconds. So we can display it here just in case and another setup now very fast. So I try 200 milliseconds, so five times a second, so it's very fast. Also on our UART converter, we see our debug blinking LED. So let's stop the notification and start again. And now we see again our readings. So let's change again. Maybe very, very slow. I try 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds. So it's maybe just a little bit boring to wait, but now we see just an update every 10 seconds. Okay, now switch back to a fast measurement. Maybe 250 milliseconds. And now we see again the fast update. So let's do a disconnect and that's it for today. So you can find my source code at GitHub. Just look at the description down below. And as always, thanks for watching today and I hope you learned something. If so, please give me a thumbs up, write some comments down below and subscribe to my channel. So bye bye.